It's pretty uncommon for me to like a game at first, then eventually begin hating it. But what's even more uncommon is for me to like a game when I first play it, then hate it, and then come back around and start liking it again. And yet, here we are. Hot Dogs, Horseshoes, and Hand Grenades is one of the most interesting VR games for me. Not just because of the game itself, but because of how my enjoyment of it has changed throughout the years. And yes, I really do mean years. I discovered this game years ago, back when the original Vive was still the new kid in town. And wow, did this game ever look incredible back then. It still does. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, Hot Dogs, Horseshoes, and Hand Grenades, which, by the way, I'm just going to shorten to H3VR from now on because, God, that's a long name. Anyway, H3VR is a game about being American. That's right, lawn games, fireworks, full fat barbecue, and putting a way too high caliber bullet in a handgun. I feel like the only thing this game is missing is some fast food shit, like chicken nuggets or something. Uh, joystick to engage targeting, aim at the planes above. Oh, the, those planes! The chicken nuggets! Alright, never mind, this game does really have everything. Seriously though, this game is incredible. There is so much you can do in this game. I mean, hell, it has an arsenal that almost puts the US's military spending budget to shame. Okay, fine, I'll stop with the America jokes. Anyway, H3 VR is just absolutely stellar in how it does everything. The gunplay is the best I've seen in VR, like, ever. Seriously, ever. There isn't a single game that does guns as well as this game does. And the animations that go along with it are perfectly crafted, not to mention the actual models that are some of the cleanest and sharpest out there. The maps are detailed with unique elements and interactive parts, and the variety you get in even just the training areas provides hours of entertainment. There are kill houses, shooting ranges, unique game modes, all sorts of props, goofy weapons, and... Jerry the Lemon? <laughs> you see what I'm talking about? This game is just amazing. It's an endless stream of fun, entertainment, and enjoyment. At least, that's what I th thought it would be. Yeah, the intro of this video wasn't just a joke or some clickbaity hook. After about an hour of playing this game for the first time, it just sat in my Steam library after that. Despite being one of the first games I ever got for PC VR, it's one of my least played. For a game that I loved so much when I first tried it, it just didn't do it for me after that. So what's the problem? If the game looks this good and handles this good, what possibly could be the issue with it? Well, the problem is that it's a weapon sandbox, and that's about it. Sure, the guns are great and all, but if all the game is is just target practice and shooting the same thing over and over and over and over again, that's not really fun. When I play this game after I first got it, I just load into a world, find a gun, be amazed at how everything looks and feels, only then to just get bored after an hour because I've already exhausted everything in the game. And arguably, the variation in there is what makes it worse. When I load up a new level in H3VR, my disappointment grows when I find out it's just like all the other maps I've played, with a new coat of paint. It's made even worse by the fact that many guns are just slight variations of each other with only slight differences between them. Like seriously, it's cool that you have all 5 variants of M16, but why do you need more than like, 2? Who really needs that? How is having all of these going to increase my enjoyment over having just 1 or 2? Part of the reason why games with less accurate and less enthralling gun mechanics are still fun is because there's more to do than just the guns. Take a game like Half-Life Alex, for instance. This game has been looked down upon many times for how uninteresting the guns are, from the fact that they're only one-handed or that there's only three of them or how lackluster the reloading is. But yet, nobody complains that Half-Life Alex is a bad game. That's because while the guns may be disappointing at times, there's still lots more of the game out there for you to enjoy, and hell, some levels even discourage the use of guns entirely. I can spend hours in Half-Life Alex finding new ways to do things, areas I've yet to explore, or sections I can cheese with poor physics, but with H3 VR, none of these things are possible. Instead, I get bored when I look through the guns list, disappointed when I see the same MP5 for the third time, and downright irritable when the new map I loaded in has nothing new over the last one. For a game that feels this good and has this much variety, it's also the game that I get bored with the easiest. It's a game that truly is suffering from its own success. This isn't the first time I've tried to make this video. Like I said, I've been playing this game for a long time, but every time I try to make a video about this game, I end up just getting bored of the game after one or two days and the video fizzles out. But why then do I keep coming back to this? Why is it that after a couple months, I keep getting that urge to play this gun sandbox game? Well, that's the answer right there. It's a sandbox game. The best thing about sandbox games is 
that they're sandbox games. Well, yeah, no shit. Okay, but what I mean is that sandbox games don't have a set ending. There's no definitive way to play them. You can set yourself an objective and play for that, or you can just blow shit up for an hour and a half. And that's what Hot Dogs, Horseshoes, and Hand Grenades is all about. Blowing shit up for an hour and a half. And actually, that's more true than you think. Most of my recordings for the past six months of this game are about an hour and a half long. But my point being, this game, it's not designed for you to have something to do. It's not supposed to have some elegant story or crazy progression. It's designed for you to set your own goals, to test out your own ideas, and to put it down when you're finished. It's not designed to be played for days straight or to have long marathon sessions or even to be that enthralling. It's designed for that moment when you think, huh, I feel like shooting a watermelon with a 50 cal. It's okay that I don't want to play this game a ton. It's okay that after an hour I get bored. Because I know that in a month or two, I'm going to want to load back into one of the best damn gun simulators there is. This game is fun when you want to have fun. It's the game that I play when I just want to mess around with a bit, not caring about scores or progression or story. I mean, hell, I don't even mind that this game doesn't have a story when it has an actual Fisher-Price My First Shotgun. Yeah, that's the dumbest thing in this game so far. Like I said earlier in this video, this game is fantastic, with some of the best gunplay I've seen in video gaming to date. And with complex maps, tons of unique weapons, and more content on the way, there are loads of things to do in this game, just not enough for one day's worth. Despite all of its faults, I still highly recommend this game. Because sometimes, yeah, it really is just fun to blow shit up for an hour and a half. So with that, I think it's about time I take my leave. Because I'm off to shoot more targets with big guns, just maybe in a month or two. I'm pretty sure this is how we won World War II.